Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing what happens to a butterfly that's flying in my van when I slam on the brakes. Will the butterfly go flying forward or will it stay right where it is? So the reason I'm doing this video is because I've gotten so many questions about this one circumstance. When you're driving in your car and there's a bug flying around, what happens when you slam on your brakes or speed up? Does it affect where the bug is in the car? Are the bug and the car separate entities or are they coupled together still somehow because the bug is actually in the air in the car? So what actually happens when you change velocity in the car, does it affect the bug somehow who's flying in the car? So I have here a butterfly that I caught in my backyard. Don't worry, I'm not gonna harm the butterfly. We all love butterflies. And if I do need to make the butterfly move in the car, I'm gonna be using what I call my butterfly wand. It's just a long stick with a flower on the end of it so I can kind of get it to fly if I need it to fly in the car. Not gonna harm the butterfly and he's going to be released at the end. Don't worry everyone. So first I'm going to try it with a small drone in the car. I've done this experiment with a larger drone but it could be different for this smaller drone and then an even smaller butterfly. Okay, I'm gonna throw the drone up. It should fly on its own and then let's see what happens when I slam on my brakes. So the first thing to notice is that the drone is flying just fine even though I'm driving at 40 miles an hour in my car. That's because I released the drone when I was going 40 miles an hour, it was going 40 miles an hour, the air in the car was going 40 miles an hour, and the car. And so everything's going the same speed already, so there's no reason that the drone should do anything different when I throw it up in the air. And so it can just hover there just fine, going the same speed as it was going before I let it go. But then, as soon as I slam on my brakes, the drone just flies to the front of the car. That's because as soon as I slammed on my brakes, I was able to slow down due to the friction on my seat below me and my seat belt. The air was slowing down a little bit because the car was able to push some of the air and slow it down. But the drone itself wasn't able to slow down because there was not a lot of force, only the air around it, and that couldn't apply a lot of force to it. And so it just kept going forward at around 40 miles an hour, probably a little bit slower. And so with a small drone in the car, you can see that the drone is pretty much decoupled from the car around it. So as soon as you start accelerating in the car, it leaves the drone behind. And if you slam on your brakes, it makes the drone fly forward in the car. But now let's see if the same thing happens to a butterfly in the car. Okay, so I'm going to release this butterfly, then I'm gonna slam on my brakes and see what happens. We're going to release the butterfly. There it goes. Okay. Okay, the butterfly really likes to go towards the window, so I'm gonna to have to use my butterfly wand to get it flying. Okay, you can see the butterfly went forward a little bit when I slammed on my brakes. But it's not like it just went shooting forward and slammed into the windshield as if it were outside of the car hitting the front of the windshield or something. I'm gonna try accelerating really fast while it's flying. So I'm just gonna slam on my gas. So even though the drone would have flown back to the back of the car, the butterfly just stayed right at the front. Now the main reason for the discrepancy between the drone and the butterfly is that the butterfly has a lot more surface area to mass. And so it means that basically when I slam on the brakes in the car and the whole thing comes to a stop, 
the butterfly basically needs to fly through a bunch of air. So it has to fly towards the front of the car when I slam on my brakes, but there's a bunch of air. So it's basically what you'd expect if you were to drop a butterfly in the air, it wouldn't fall very fast. And so even though I'm stopping really fast in the car, the air basically slows the butterfly down to match almost the speed of the car. Whereas the drone, as soon as I slam on my brakes, it just flies to the front of the car because it has to fly through that air and the air doesn't have a huge effect on it. So a good comparison to what I'm saying would be that, so normally just standing here, we have one G of acceleration on us. So it's the equivalent of speeding up pretty fast in a car or slowing down pretty fast. So basically, if you just have a drone and a butterfly and you drop them, you can imagine the drone would just drop like a rock, whereas the butterfly, if it didn't fly around, it would just kind of float down like that. And so that's because of the wind resistance on the butterfly can slow it down significantly, but the drone, it can't. And so what this means is that the larger the surface area to mass ratio of your flying object, the better it will be coupled to your vehicle. So when you slow down, it slows down. When you speed up, it speeds up, even though it's flying in your car. That's because the air can basically push it and accelerate it to what it needs to get to to match your car. This pretty much answers the question that the insects flying in your car are pretty well coupled to your car because of how they're affected by the air in the car. The air can slow them down and speed them up to match the car anyways. So they're not just gonna fly from the back of your car to the front of your car and hit the front of the windshield unless there's really extreme accelerations where it would just get accelerated at really high accelerations to the front of the car. But in that case, I think you'd be injured as well as the bug. Okay, and as promised, we'll let our little butterfly go. There it goes. It's a cool butterfly. So in order to understand this experiment, we have to first understand some laws of motion. The first thing to remember is that nothing can change its velocity without having a force on it. So what this law means is that any object will continue moving its current velocity unless there's a force on it. If there's no force on it, it will just continue at its current velocity indefinitely. Now that may be confusing for some of you because we're used to things always coming to rest. If they're moving, eventually they're just gonna come to rest on their own. But the only reason they come to rest on their own is because there are actually forces causing it to come to rest. And that's due to air friction or if we push something on the ground, it's the friction on the ground. There's always some friction causing it to come to rest. And so there is a force pushing the opposite direction that causes it to stop. But if there are no external forces on it, if you were in space, in the middle of nowhere in space, and you threw something, that thing would just go at its current velocity and just stay at that velocity indefinitely. So the reason you accelerate in your car when your car accelerates is because you're in your car, you're sitting in your seat, and as soon as the seat goes forward, it pushes you forward as well. And so you end up moving at the same velocity as the car. But if there's a bug flying around in the car, the bug's flying around in the air, the car starts to go forward, and so the bug doesn't really have anything pushing on it to change its velocity. The only thing that it does have pushing on it is the air that's in the car. So the car is a closed system, and the bug is inside of it. When the car starts going forward, it brings the air with it. So the only way it can accelerate the bug flying in the car forward is that air slightly starts moving forward as well. Now for a small bug, that pushing of air is a big effect. And if it's a slow enough acceleration, then it will just bring the car forward along with the bug and everything will start moving at the same velocity eventually. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And you can also hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And check out theactionlab.com to see the Action Lab experiment boxes. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.